Hey everyone, there was a lot of discussion about the idea of electric potential, uh, voltage, and trying to visualize why charges want to accelerate from high voltage to low voltage, or why electrons want to go in the reverse direction. So I've got a visual for you, and the visual here is a siphon where I'm going to move liquid from one container to another. If you look at this original setup here, we've got a very, very high level of gravitational potential for that beaker on the right, and we have a very, very low gravitational potential on the left beaker. So if you allow water to move from high potential to low potential by having that tube connected, even though it's counterintuitive, that water will actually go up the right tube and down into the left tube. And this will continue to happen until all of that mass gets to a lower gravitational potential. So the same thing would happen with charges. If you have a big difference in potential, charges are going to move from the high voltage down to the low voltage. Now, you can see in the second example, I move them on the same level. But just because the beaker is on the same level doesn't mean that the water is at the same potential. So this demonstration here still shows that water is going to now reverse its path and head from the left beaker to the right beaker because the right, left beaker has more potential than the right. Now this will happen and the masses will keep moving until each levels out. So when they f level out in the end, there's no difference in either potential level, so there's no reason for the water to want to move from one side to the other. So in this next example you can see, I'm swapping it again. They were both at the same level when they were on the same surface, but now that I raise one of them to higher potential, you can see that it's going to flow to low potential. Even if I take that tube out of the liquid, you can see that the flow stops when I bring the hose to the same exact level. You can see as I lift the hose that the level of the water in the hose stays the same as the beaker on the right. And if we had to, want to have some fun on one more demonstration, I can lift the left beaker up to a very, very high potential difference from the left to the right. So it means there should be a really fast flow of water. And you can see that I can kind of create a fountain. That's what we mean when we say when if there is a large potential difference from one side to the next, that objects, in this case now charges, will flow from the high voltage to the low voltage. The work will be done by the field and the potential energy would decrease as quickly as possible. Remember, life is lazy, so we want to try and be at our lowest energy state possible. So let's try this example. We've got potential, we want to find the electric potential at two locations around here. You've got point one and point two. And really to find the potential for point charges, that's pretty easy. All we need to do is take the sum of kq over r for each charge. So you do this for charge one, then you add it to charge two, and that will give you the total voltage at whatever region in space you're looking for. So let's do that for point one and point two. So if I put a test charge there at point one, first thing we need to tell ourselves is, well, is there an electric field? Well, you could say that electric field from charge one is pointing to the right, and electric field from point two is pointing to the left. And since they're equal charges and equal distance, looks like those electric fields are the same. So really there is no electric field here. So if there's no electric field, a lot of you want to say, okay, well, what we've learned so far is that a change in voltage is electric field times our displacement. And if there's no electric field, then there must be zero voltage. And that's a common misconception. Just because there's no electric field at that point doesn't mean that it didn't take work for me to take that test charge from infinitely far away and bring it all the way to this location. It's more about the journey than the actual physical point. So yes, at that location there is no electric field. However, there is electric potential. There is voltage and that means that that charge is at a higher energy state. That charge can easily get to a lower energy state if it moves out of that region. It's not feeling a net force, so it's not going to need to move, but it is kind of trapped between these two charges, kind of trapped between two mountains, if you want to think of it that way. So let's crunch these out. I want to do KQ over R for charge one, 
and KQ over R for charge two. So if I do the setup for KQ over R for charge one, at point P, since it's four centimeters away, I get 1,123 volts. If I do that KQ two over R, it's the same charge and it's the same distance, so really all I have to do is double this. So when you double this, you get a total voltage of 2246 volts. And it's a positive potential at point P. And the reason it's a positive potential is because it's between two positive charges. If that second charge would have been a negative, well, the positive charge would have given 1123 positive volts, the negative charge would have given it negative 1123 volts, and we would actually be at a zero potential difference. So it could be zero volts, but you'd have to have opposite charges. Well, let's look at point two. At point two, things are gonna change. Charge one is now six centimeters away, and you can see that charge two is 10 centimeters away. So you've gotta do that equation two times now for two separate charges and sum the voltage. Looking at point two, we've got 749 volts from charge one and 449 volts from charge two, giving us a grand total of around 1198 volts. So around 1200 volts of potential at point two, and we had over 2246 volts at point one. So if you were gonna move from point one over to point two, if that charge was able to move there, it'd be decreasing in potential, which means it would be decreasing its potential energy. And like we saw with some examples today, we'd be increasing our velocity. You could set up your equation to see how energy would be conserved moving from point one to point two. And here you've got two point charges trying to figure out what the voltage is at different locations. So you've got charge one there at the origin, charge two is an A distance away, and there's point P. So if we want to solve for the voltage at point P, we can just do KQ over R for each individual charge. Charge two is closer, charge one is further away but still has an influence. And if you look at the graph there, they've graphed the voltages. As you approach the origin, the voltage is going to increase by a one over R relationship. And as it decreases, as you move away from charge one and on to charge two, it never fully reaches a zero point. So that's what we just saw in the last problem, that when, when that charge was sitting in between charge one and charge two, we said the field was zero. It didn't feel any force, but it was still at a particular voltage. So the test charge could be seen like sitting between these two mountains and not being able to move left or right. It's kind of stuck in between those. So it's up at a higher energy state, but it feels no force to try and move left or right in that potential well. So one of the biggest things that people have to come to grips with in electric potential and this voltage idea is visualizing what the charges actually see. So I have a demonstration I want to show you. So I'll leave a link to the simulator here that you can play with on your own. And what this shows us is the electric fields around a point charge. So I've got my point charge here, and all those little white dots can be seen as test charges. So if you put a test charge in this field, the field is pointing inwards because all the test charges are rushing in, which means I'm looking at a negative charge. I could reverse this field, and now you see all the charges being repelled from that central point, which means that central point is a positive. But that's a 2D view, and we've drawn many, many of these 2D views. Let's look at this in a 3D view. So here's that negative charge again in 3D format. That is what charges see as they approach a negative. Every little test charge here is attracted to the negative, and the reason that it starts to pick up speed as it approaches the negative is because it approaches this dip in this warp in space, kind of like gravity and black holes. You've got extremely strong force at the center near the charge, and you've got weaker forces out here on the fringes. Let's reverse the charges. That's a negative. Let's look at a positive charge. Here's a positive charge. So a positive charge looks like one gigantic mountain. So there's a very, very steep peak where the positive charge is, and as you move away from that positive charge, you can see the test charges come rolling down that hill, 
decreasing their potential energy and increasing their kinetic energy. Let's look at a dipole. Here's the flat view of a dipole. So you can see test charge is moving away from the positive and towards the negative. Uh, I can increase field strength and you can see the charges move a lot faster. Uh, I can put more test charges in the field. I can even separate those two charges as far as I want. So I've made the test charges far apart. If I put the two test charges at zero distance, a positive and negative give you zero charge, which means those test charges don't even move because there's no forces involved. So let's separate those charges again. So there's a positive and there's a negative in the flat view we're used to. Let's look at this in 3D view. Here's what charges see when they get close to a dipole. They see a very, very steep mountain right next to a very, very large sinkhole. The mountain and the sinkhole are the positive and the negative charge. And you can see that there is a region right here in the middle where we could say that there is level ground. There is no potential right where my cursor is right here. There is definitely a field, but the voltage would be zero at that point. As I approach the negative, I would increase my negative volts as I head towards the negative charge, and I would increase my positive volts as I went towards the positive charge. But right here on this level plane, there is zero potential around. There is field, but there is no voltage on the flat surface. So they've got lots of crazy setups here. This is a quad pole, so this is two positives surrounded by two negatives, so basically two dipoles. And you can see right there in the middle, those little test charges are not really moving whatsoever. They are being repelled by both positives, attracted by both negatives, so they really don't feel any force. And if you would actually sum up all of your voltages, I bet you this location right here ends up being zero volts as well. It's on that flat plane, so the charges in that central part do not move whatsoever. So here's the example we just calculated. The example we just calculated was two positive charges, and we said what is going on with the electric field and what is the voltage at those two locations. Well, right here in the center, you can see again, a test charge is feeling no force, but it's up, it's lifted away from the flat land. It is raised to a higher voltage or a higher potential. There's no uh, force that's going to make it move from that central spot. So the zero voltage or the zero energy line is that flat part around the edges, but you can see I'm trapped between those two midpoints and charges would not want to move left or right. Same thing if you had two negatives. With the two negatives, right in the center again, no force, or be at some negative voltage at that location, and as you move towards either of the other charges, you'd move to a negative, more negative voltage or potential. What about a charge plate? Here's an infinite line of charge. This infinite line is negatively charged. Here's an infinite line of charge that's positively charged. And that's where we're used to seeing in flat view in three-dimensional space. You can see that when it's a infinite line of charge, the field is nice and uniform. And when it's positive, it looks like one nice slide. The charges get a nice free ride all the way down from high volts to low volts. If it's a negative charge, there you go. It's kind of like a little book. All the charges fall down towards that central location where the line of charge is. The field is steady, but the potential decreases from zero down to some negative amount. All right, and here we got a flat view again of two charge plates. So we have a positive plate and a negative plate. I'm gonna call this one the positive because I see the test charges running away. I see this one is the negative. Let's look at it in 3D view. And this is the reason charges move from one plate to the next. There is a high voltage along the positive plate and there's a low voltage along the negative plate. So really, it's like one gigantic slide for the charges. And the further we separate those two, you can see it's like one giant sled riding hill for test charges from high volts all the way down to low volts, high potential to low potential. So play around with this. You can see there's many, many different setups they have, and you can change a lot of the different effects, see which one's your favorite, and definitely test out the ones where they have charged cylinders. Look at the electric field inside those cylinders and explain to me what's going on. So voltage or electric potential, 
to raise the voltage of a positive charge. That means I'd have to take a positive charge and do work on it. I'd have to increase its potential energy and bring that charge up that mountain. If I wanted to lower the voltage for a negative charge, it would be the same thing. Trying to take a negative electron and push it down that sinkhole, the electron doesn't want to be anywhere near the bottom of that sinkhole because there's another negative charge there. So you would have to force it down there and do work. So if you want to know the potential difference around certain charges, first, take that test charge and pull it away from the charge in question. If the work is done by the field and you lose potential energy, the object must have been at high potential. And if you do work to push that charge to infinity and that object is gaining potential energy, that must mean that it was at low potential. This is true for positive charges and completely opposite for all negative charges. So that's the only trouble in trying to conceptually visualize what's happening with electricity. We've got two charges that will do opposite things in electric field. So in this example here, if I wanted to rank locations of high voltage and low voltage, I'd say that for this drawing, voltage B is higher than voltage A because it would take me work to push the charge from A to B because it wants to get away from that positive charge in the middle. So to do that would increase its potential energy and require work from an outside force. Over here, if I take that charge from location A and move to location B for the negative, then voltage at location A is greater than voltage at location B. So the voltage at location B would be a lot lower than the voltage at location A. Why? Because you would say that there's zero potential far away from the negative charge and as you fall in that sinkhole, you would gain negative voltage or negative potential energy. Opposite for the positive. The positive charge would be high voltage when you're very, very close to the charge and decrease voltage or potential energy as you move away. Look at the work done by the field and it should tell you energies and potentials at different locations.